Johnson hearing the boos from this crowd. He told us he sees this fight as father versus son. Nelson adding, I love the guy, meeting Jeff Fennick, but this is business. Upwards of 30,000 here, and this is the scene at Prince's Park, live from Melbourne, Australia. We are set for the official introductions and pre-fight festivities. Let's go to our ring announcer, Ray Connolly. Ladies and gentlemen, would you kindly rise in respect of the national anthems. Firstly, Ghana. To sing Australia's national anthem from Melbourne, Victoria, John St. Peter's. Australians all, let us rejoice for we are young. And free, we've golden soil and wealth of toil. Our home is good by sea. Our land abounds in nature's gifts of beauty, rich and rare. In history's page, let every stage advance Australia fair. In joyful strains, then let us sing. Dance Australia fair. Ladies and gentlemen, in collaboration with Don King Productions, Bill Morty's Classic Promotions, host to his historical Big Blue, scheduled for 12 three-minute rounds for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Supervisor from Puerto Rico, Gabriel Pena Garricano. Physicians, Michael Clancy, Lou Lewis. Timekeepers, John Holloway, Graham Olahead. Judges, from London, England, Harry Gibbs, OBE. From the United States of America, New Jersey, Tim Kazmeri. California's Rudy Ortega. Three, his 97th world title, New York's legendary 
Asa McCanty occupying the blue corner, scaling 129 pounds, wearing black trunks with white markings, hailing from Murrayville, Sydney, Australia. Undefeated in 27 contests, 26 victories, 19 inside the distance, one draw. Member of the exclusive 11 to have won world championships in three different weight divisions. Consummating prophecy of supernova infinity, challenger Jeff Fennec. red corner also scaling 129 pounds wearing white trunks with technicolor markings hailing from Accra Ghana 36 encounters have produced 33 victories 24 by knockout two losses one draw, twice a world champion, perpetuating majesty at Glory Shrine, defending his diadem, Azuma Nelson. Zuma, Jeff, this contest for the Super Featherweight Championship of the World will be governed by the rules of the World Boxing Council. You received your instructions earlier. We expect you to obey them, and if you don't, you will be penalized. Shake hands now, and good luck to both of you. A light but steady right here in Melbourne, Australia, and it is leaking through the canvas. There are at least three areas where the rain is coming through the canopy. And Arthur McCanny, I noticed before, just shaking his head, looking at the rain coming through the top here. It's formed three puddles, but they're in the middle of the ring as far as Fenix is concerned. He wants to fight along the ropes, so he doesn't really care about the middle of the ring. Round one scheduled for 12. Azuma Nelson doesn't want to go to the ropes again as he did in the first fight. About six rounds worth. In that first fight, Finnick pushed me into the ropes, said Azuma. He didn't allow me to move. I sustained his punches. And he also said, I don't mind. And he was really getting nailed repeatedly with Fennec uppercuts. Others just feel that Azuma Nelson just ran out of gas. Or got worn down by this non-stop punching machine that's Fennec. Right now, Fennec, like he did in the first fight, uh, in the first round, rather tentative, Azuma coming on with superior boxing skill, but it was just the opening minute. Fennec being the street fighter he is, uses anything and everything to gain the edge. Tries to get his opponent really rattled, but the experienced Azuma Nelson doesn't easily get duped into that stuff. We will see today. Of course, in that first battle, Fennec threw a volume of punches at Azuma Nelson, but couldn't put him away. So you have to question his punching power, or is Nelson that difficult to put down? Well, I'll tell you who's got punching power. That's Azuma Nelson. That right hand can make you wave in a breeze, and then come those combinations. Also, keep an eye on the uppercut. Uh, the uppercut of Azuma Nelson is the thing of you. Fennec with the pressure. Azuma Nelson, a skillful boxer as well as ferocious puncher, punishing fighter, similar to Julio Cesar Chavez. He likes to accumulate. There's a right, oh. and down goes Fennec. And that's a right hand we talked about, that long right. 
the first time, the second time in his career, he's been down. He's never been knocked out. He's been put to the canvas only once, so that was early in his career. Keep your eyes on that right hand and the uppercut. There's the uppercut. What a stunning turn of events. Azuma Nelson is trying to finish Fedek off now in the final minute of the first round. A lot of time, 46 seconds. Azuma not swarming, however. Very, very crafty warrior. He'll take his chances. He'll let Fedek get crazy, and then he'll nail him again. There's that hook again by Azuma Nelson, a very talented boxer. Nelson predicted he would knock out Fedek inside seven. I didn't think he meant the first. I don't think he think he thought he meant the first. It was just a perfect right hand. Final seconds of round one. Fedek looking to recharge. And Nelson continues to unload. Big round for the champion, Azuma Nelson. Let's take a look at that knockdown. Keep your eye on the right hand of Azuma Nelson. He reaches with it, but it's just a perfectly landed right hand. Whoop, there it goes. And that is a sort of fold down by Azuma. I mean by uh, Fennec. Again, he's setting him up with a right jab and comes a you see, his boxing perfection of Azuma Nelson is the right, the, the left jab that sets it up. Two or three, soft, and then bam, comes the right hand, and down goes Fennec. Big surprise. Round two of the crowd, getting behind Jeff Fennec. He was put to the canvas for only the second time in his illustrious career, the first round here by Nelson. Nelson's punch is much, much harder than Phoenix to start this round. The mark of a good champion is he doesn't get excited, he doesn't get overpowered. He just knows that he can outbox him, does Azuma Nelson, and he's got that reserve, that calmness, waiting for his superior boxing to give him the advantage, as it did in that first round knockdown, giving him a 10-8 round to begin with. The 33-year-old Nelson, 33-2-1 with 24 knockouts. His only losses to Salvador Sanchez and Colonel Whitaker. He's looking to prove something here. He felt he won that first fight, June 28th, and he just wants to shut everybody up. Panic looking a little wild, as if he just couldn't conceive that would happen to him, and... Uh, he is getting a, trying to reach for his punches rather than boxing intelligently, and you don't see him pulling Azuma Nelson to the ropes in this fight. Again, a different Azuma Nelson, as we said at the top of the show, well conditioned and determined to come out of here with dignity and with his title. He said he wasn't in shape for the first fight, on top of the fact that he had malaria. Meanwhile, Jeff Fennick, nine days ago, had breathing problems. Here's a wild miss by Zuma Nelson. He had an allergy that manifested itself as asthma, compounded by a chest infection, says he's okay now. Going to the midsection of Azuma Nelson, that gets a rise from the crowd. But no damage. And getting too wild. Heavy right there by Nelson, that was shielded by Fennec. And Fennec missing. Fennec being controlled by that left jab of Azuma Nelson. Watch that jab, just keep popping in there, popping in there, getting him off his timing, not letting him get a, 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 his attack in place. Fennec not having the success with swarming because of the left jab of Azuma Nelson. When we asked Fennec about the condition of his hands, he said that emphatically, my hands are fine. There was speculation that he broke a hand after the first fight. Oh, he went down again! Oh, oh. That same right hand, the same thing. A jab controlled him in the right hand. a slip as Arthur County counts Jeff Fennick. That's the second knockdown for Azuma Nelson, final seconds of round two. That was a delayed reaction to the right hand. 
He does not know what to do with that right hand, and he better get some instruction in the corner. Jeff Maddock looking startled, perplexed. He was very tense coming to this fight, feeling the weight on his shoulders. An entire country looking at him. He's walking up the square onto him all the time. And he's trying to get us to the big hook in the right hand. Come on, son. How do you feel, Jack? You know, I'm fine. <coughs> Maybe behind the eight ball over. I've just got to keep the jab down and get the points up now. Now, keep your eye on that jab. Two, three, and there goes the right hand. Now, two, three, and the right hand again. Now, this one. This one was a punch that crumpled him down, but he did slip on some wet stuff there. That, in all fairness, that was a slip, but followed by a strong right hand, which had crumpled him, and that was kind of borderline, but with the net result of this, let's watch that right hand again. Right hand was on the neck, and the, no, it was on the neck and uh, the top of the head, not enough to crumple him. That kind of was a slip, but the net result is the same. Azuma Nelson ahead, 20 to 16 as the third round starts. It looked like a knockdown from here, even though there are wet spots with rain dripping through the canopy. A hard left by Azuma Nelson. Round three scheduled for 12, the WBC Super Featherweight Championship fight. Azuma Nelson right now teaching young Jeff Bennett some boxing lessons. He said, coming in, it would be father versus son. There's a combination by Bennett. But he's hitting nothing but gloves and the elbows of Azuma Nelson. Look at that uppercut. Savage uppercut by Azuma Nelson. Nelson measuring Fennec out, and it's Fennec against the ropes. And here comes Fennec fighting back off the ropes, but notice it's Fennec on the ropes, not Azuma Nelson. Oh, Fennec got tagged on the chin. Now he turns Nelson around. This crowd comes to life as Azuma Nelson looked at the referee saying, you're going to let him get away with that? Fennec swarming. Now, this is reminiscent of the first fight. And again, Azuma, who can get away from there if he wants to, chooses to stay there. He told us he doesn't mind. He just looked over at us and smiled. Well, the, keep, your, keep in mind the uppercuts in here and what do the damage. Back comes Azuma Nelson, fighting from the ropes. And a return barrage from Fennec. Oh, strong punches back from Azuma Nelson, although Fennec building up points with that non-stop attack of his. Uppercut by Azuma Nelson. Fennec all over. Azuma Nelson. Less than a minute to go. Round three. Something unnatural. Fennec against the ropes, not Azuma Nelson. 
and then driving a, a Zuma Nelson to the ropes where he chooses to stay. And then, of course, the bell sounded. Fennec has got his blood up, and he just can't stop. He got hit again, and he knees, he knees the Zuma Nelson. That's a foul and could be punished. That is something Arthur McCanny didn't see, or he would have taken a point away. Buffalo Martin went wild in the Azuma Nelson corner. Round four, as things really heat up. Fennec put for the canvas twice. Round one, round two, and then coming back in round three. And there seems to be a little problem with the right eye of Jeff Fennec. He was cut under the left eye in the third round of the first fight, you recall. And it was a great job by quarterman and cut man Johnny Lewis to keep him going. Arthur Mercati, the third man of the ring out of Garden City, New York. 97th World Championship fight. He is used to these circumstances. It was obvious that Mercati did not see that kneeing. If he, if he had, he'd have taken away the round, the only one that Jeff Fennick has won. Bear in mind, with 10-8 uh, rounds, he was already behind 20 to 16 when this round started. Arthur Mercati known for letting fighters fight in the clinches, but he's also a very strict disciplinarian. Now both fighters perhaps feeling the effects of those wild first three rounds and just letting up a hair. Heavy punches by Nelson, but not having damage. It's clear that as long as as Fennett stays in the middle of the ring, he's not going to have the better of it. He needs to brawl and maul, and he needs to be in the trenches. He needs to have Azuma Nelson's back to the to the ropes, and that he won't get unless Azuma chooses to let him do that. And the rain letting up. Not as much a factor as earlier. Heavy left hand by Fennett. And back comes Nelson with uppercut. What a weapon. But the ever-charging Jeff Fennick, so fierce, the buzzsaw style, forever forward. Did not seem to be affected by those two first knockdowns. Surprised him, but didn't hurt him. He is fighting with full force here. He's back to the ropes. A wild miss by Azuma Nelson. Two animalistic competitors here. Final 30 seconds, round four. drying off the canvas with the towels. It was raining pretty steadily just moments ago. And as mentioned, it's letting up a bit. But they're doing their level best to keep it as dry as possible. So far, the only fact of that has been is that apparent knockdown where he also slipped into the bargain, giving uh, the crowd a little momentary uh, a pause for argument. The people wearing their slickers here in Melbourne, Australia, were coming to you live from Prince's Park. And we keep reiterating the the uh, disadvantage that Jeff Bennett had put himself into when he had two 10-8 rounds in a row, making it 20 to 16 to start the third round. Go! It is round five, scheduled for 12. mentioned before, Fennec got cut in the first fight, but they healed him up pretty quickly, and it wasn't a factor. We'll see how it goes here. It looks like a mild abrasion. It's lumping up. His face is lumping up as Fennec's, and that's due to the strong jab, and then the hooks of Azuma Nelson. This left hand of uh, Azuma Nelson is giving an education to young Jeff Fennec. Fennec, 27, six years younger, 
They're the champion. And Nelson with combination. Uppercut. And that snaps Fennick's head back. And again, it's Fennick near the ropes. And Fennick chooses to attack again when, he, when he's back to the ropes. He explodes when he gets in trouble. And uh, Azuma taking his time, not attacking him on the ropes, letting him just get off the hook. That's a mark of uh, confidence on the part of the champion and experience. Look at that left hand of Azuma Nelson. Pop, pop, pop. That comes Fennec for more. Combination by Fennec, who was put to the canvas in the first round and in the second round. Much to the surprise and chagrin of this huge crowd in his home town. Unlike the first fight, many of Fennec's punches are landing on those high gloves of Azuma Nelson not coming near landing for points. Now it's Azuma Nelson sticking the jab, trying to set himself up for the run, but a sweeping left hook by Fennec. There's no question that this is not Fennec's fight. There's no question he's got to pull him into the ropes. He's got to charge forward. He's not doing that yet. I'm surprised this corner had to set him forth. Fennec continues to look confused. He cannot out-jab Azuma Nelson is what's happening. He keeps getting hit with the right hand off that jab. The crowd reacting, but Azuma Nelson did. He did to that. That one snapped them back. A sharp right hand by Jeff Fennec got the attention of Azuma Nelson. And that was the first good, strong punch that Fennec has landed cleanly. I mean cleanly. Driving Azuma Nelson back into the ropes, which is exactly where Fennec wants it. Arthur Mercati steps between. Wild left by Nelson. He wants to end this. A straight right by Nelson. There goes the mouthpiece of hey, Jeff Fennick. Hey. That could mean fatigue. No cut to relax, okay? Only anytime you can inside, all right? Jab, only the jab win the fight, okay? Through the jab, through the jab, and put the right, good right hand, okay? No rest too much, assume. This is serious fight. Give me some basketball. This is a boxing lesson. Look at that uppercut, and then the right hand right over the uppercut that drives Fennec into the uh, corner. This is most of, of what happened in, in that round. The superior boxing and in evil intention of Azuma Nelson. But then again, Fen Fennec came back and landed a beautiful shot. Let's see it here. There was a beautiful right hand landed right there. And uh, that was about the only thing Master Fennec did to the professor. So he is slipping badly uh, in this fight. And uh, great will be the lamenting of this crowd if this scoring is anywhere near what I have. I have Fennec way to have. This is a very worried crowd here in Melbourne, Australia. Round six for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship. Azuma Nelson in the white front. Jeff Fennec, the challenger in the black. In the corner, he was told, just as we're observing, keep that left jab going and cross with the right. Buffalo Martin, seeing what I'm seeing, that left jab is controlling Jeff Fennec. And in Fennec's corner, they have to be saying, push this guy, bull this guy, make him go to the corner with him. Make him go to the ropes. A roundhouse right by Jeff Fennec that sailed away. Sailed away and leaving him open to a counter right. Another furious exchange, but no punches being landed. Bennett continues to be frustrated. Azuma Nelson almost seems too casual, as if he knows he's mastering this young man, and he really doesn't need to do much more. Could be a big mistake, because Bennett will be at him until 12 rounds goes by. Nelson, the master craftsman, that was a stinging uppercut by Bennett that got in. 
but it doesn't seem to have much effect on the chin of Azuma Nelson. There's a right hand by Nelson. Nelson told us he's got a face of rock, and I'm beginning to believe him. But now, a hard charging. Jeff Bennett putting Nelson into the ropes just above our broadcast point. Now, McCanny breaking them, meaning that Fennick can't push him into the ropes where he wants him. In Las Vegas, he could push him into the ropes and continue to follow him. Here, they're getting broken up. Back at the FedEx favorite corner. This is what Fennick does so well. This is what Fennick must do to win this fight. If he doesn't do this, no chance. And we end the sixth round with a flurry. this round by you sticking that jab in his face. You all right to be honest with me? Jesus, yeah. boy, come on, mate. We're going to turn the fight that round. We let him back into it. <laughs> God's sake, don't let him hit you. Keep him in there. You know what you're doing in there. It's our domain. You can breathe in Yeah. Here's a rally in the corner where Azuma Nelson turned it around. The guy that was attacking all of a sudden found a buzzsaw and he began to get hammered and then Azuma Nelson turned him around and it almost looked like the fight was beginning to end. Here's a turnaround and as it progressed on it was a belabored and weary Jeff Fennick that went back to his corner. Another big round for Azuma Nelson. Here in Melbourne, Australia, Azuma Nelson is ready for more here in round seven. He just magnetically sucked Fennick right into the corner and let him have it. Fennec simply being outclassed. That's the only word you can use when you got a consummate warrior like a Zuma Nelson. Look at that series. All out attack by Fennec, nothing landed. Fennec was knocked down in the first and again in the second, came back in the third, but since then, Azuma Nelson, the champion in command. Now he's got on the ropes again, and he didn't attack, and Azuma pulls off the ropes. And see, he's got some blood problem here as Azuma Nelson, which is uh, of no importance here because neither fighter is tired. This is no advantage to anybody. It's just uh, an equipment change. Uh, Buffalo Martin, uh, the guy that lost the mouthpiece last time, is looking for tape in a quarter. The fans remember that. It was between rounds nine and ten, though, in that first fight. Hey! Nelson's mouth guard mysteriously disappeared. And that gave Azuma Nelson invaluable time to recover. Well, Fennec's corner, interestingly enough, is getting the feeling that he's losing this fight, and they're telling him the fight is getting away from him. I have to heartily confirm and regardless of the ire of this uh, purely Fennec crowd, you'll have to say let's Azuma go. Nelson is winning this bout at this point. Now let's see if his old age becomes a factor or if he can continue this through 12. And we continue around seven. The rain has stopped. The educated left jab again. Count those jabs of Azuma Nelson. Not everyone getting in, but while he's punching, Fennec is paralyzed like before a Cobra and keeps getting punched in the face. No power behind those punches of Jeff Fennec as Azuma Nelson continues to move forward. See that two light jabs by Azuma and a hard hook to his ear of, of, of Fennec. Everything off that left hand. 
What an education. Jeff Bennett, who has never lost. He's 26 0 and 1 with 19 knockouts. The only blemish that June 28 draw was Azuma Nelson. has to do a lot more of that to uh, sway the judges. He's just not doing any fighting in order to give him these rounds. When he does punch, he's a mile away. He's not effective from outside. Again and again, you come to the same equation. Get away from the middle of the ring and get on the ropes, Jeff, and he's not doing it. Chair will cheer almost anything by Jeff Bennett. About 15 seconds left in the round. Good combination by Jeff Bennett. Tip, tip. Tell this guy, give me tape. Why don't you have tape? It's unbelievable. This thing happened on the water. Somebody tell me my, 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 my wife. My wife is here. Come on, let's go. Put this out right away. Come on. Round both of them. Two more. Buffalo said, unbelievable, so somebody my stole my tape. Me wants a big hoop in my own Last big time he lost the mouthpiece, now somebody get lost his tape. Jack, when we get him in Christ, punch his shit out of him, mate. Round eight, scheduled for 12. And Jeff Fennick has to do something. Look at these punches by Azuma Nelson. Fennick has got to fight back, but every time he fights back, he gets stung. I think he's getting gun shy. He hasn't got that same brio, that same strength, that same joy of fighting that he had in Vegas. And the reason is that Azuma Nelson's making him pay the price when he comes in. To this point, Fennick overmatched, but he's trying to come back desperately. The crowd trying to urge him on. Watch closely the hard work of the uppercuts here. Good hook by Zuma. Um, just an outrageous number of punches by Fennec. Most of them not landing, but some are building up points. And Fennec just bowling and brawling, trying to stay on top of Azuma Nelson. doesn't seem to phase Nelson. It looks like Nelson's trapped in the corner, but he is unleashing punches. He's setting a trap. He's not trapped. He can move out of there when he wants to. Absolutely. Remember, the end of uh, round six, he almost knocked out Fennec with that, in that same corner. Look at Fennec's right side of the face is completely open. See it? Completely open for a hook. And perhaps Nelson just waiting for the right moment. <laughs> the end fighting rages on. And that's exactly what Fennec wanted. That's a hook, right there it is, right there it is. And down goes Fennec for the third time of the fight. He was just waiting for the moment. That side of the face was so open, so open, Steve. He had to take advantage and he did. Azuma Nelson to the attack. Wait a minute, Arthur McKenney steps in and it's all over. It's, it's all a, over. It's going to throw in the towel, Steve. They threw in the towel and it was all over. He said it was going to be over in round seven. He missed by one. Look out now. Some of the crowd.
corner people getting into it. Azuma Nelson knocks out Jeff Fennick here in the eighth round of the Fennick corner, throwing the towel. And there they are from Ghana, Africa, celebrating, rejoicing as Azuma Nelson retains his WBC Super Featherweight Championship. And much in dismay at the other corner is Jeff Fennick. There's the happy Nelson Camp, and now back over to Fennick with Johnny Lewis consoling him. Well, this is one that will not be decided by judges. Fennick took it in his hands to come to Australia, but Azuma Nelson said he'd been weakened in the United States. He certainly proved it here. This is the old Azuma Nelson, the warrior from Africa, takes his time, superior boxing, and finished Jeff Fennick. A master artist, a craftsman, Azuma Nelson, taking Jeff Fennick to test, teaching him a lesson. What a great performance by Azuma Nelson just carving out this victory against the challenger, Jeff Fennick. As Ferdy Pacheco heads up into the ring, let's check out the final moments in round eight. It was Azuma Nelson who trapped Jeff Fennick and lowering the boom as Fennick hit the deck for the third time of this fight. First round, second round, and now in the eighth round from another angle. There's that heavy left by Azuma Nelson, followed up by the right, and that is all it took. A stunned Jeff Fennick trying to get up. And then the towel came in. You saw Arthur Riccati starting the count. And then I believe he saw over his shoulder as Ferdy Pacheco did. I was watching the fight, but Ferdy saw the towel come flying in from the Fennick corner. It'll be coming up in just a couple of seconds. And you can see it from here as Johnny Lewis jumps into the ring and he said that was it. He didn't want to see his man take any more punishment. So now they meet in the ring. Azuma Nelson, the champion, and Jeff Finney. Ladies and gentlemen, in two minutes, 20 seconds, of the eighth round, the winner by knockout, retaining the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World, Azuma Nelson. Azuma Nelson, winner by TKO, 220 of the eighth round. It was his fight just about all the way. He was in control. Calm down, calm down. We'll be right with you. I told you I'm... So the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, is ready, and he is standing by with the champion. The professor took the student to school. That's right. I told them, I'll teach them. After now I knock him out, like I said before, I'll be the guy, and then after I beat him, I'll show him his mistakes. <laughs> your, your left jab was a thing of beauty that controlled the fight. That's right. You know, that, that's why I call professor. You know, I, you can't, you can't, nobody can name you professor without nothing. All right. Now, reason why name does this prove? that you were a weak fighter because of the malaria. Wait a minute, did, did you feel you were a weak fighter in Las Vegas because you couldn't get off the ropes here? You couldn't even catch on the ropes, and when he did, he got the punishment. That's right, that's right, because I told you I know better than the guy. This fight is like, I told you before, this fight is like a father and a son, you know? <laughs> this fight is like a father and son. And I mean, uh, if your son does something wrong, you know, uh, you got to check him. You know, uh, this is the, 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 the first fight, like I told you, this is my operation here. You know, you, I, I made this operation uh, general seven. I was operated in, uh, in, uh, in space. Yeah, for, and before, for his elbow. He, had, a, he yeah. had an accumulation of fluid which That's was right. drained and aspirated so he could use his left hand. That's and, right. and also he had the malaria which is now clear. Now, uh, we have with us the That's game right. loser, Jeff Fennick. And uh, we were, were saying that it's almost a professor teaching a student today because his left jab was so educated in the first round and caught you off guard. Yeah. Oh. 
I've never underestimated him. He's a great champion and he proved it tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you have done anything different? Um, uh, you know. Jeff, could you have driven him to the ropes like you did in Vegas and why didn't you? Um, I was happy in the middle of the ring. I, you know, he proved he's a great fighter. I've never underestimated him. He's a great champion and he proved it tonight. Would you like to have another go at him now that you've had a draw and, and this resigning defeat? Definitely. I, you know, I well, you've, you've got again. a big heart, but uh, but that uh, coming back from two knockdowns in the first and second round would take an awful lot of doing. You fought your heart out, and uh, what are your plans now? What do you? What would you like to do? I'll just have a rest, and I'll just see how I feel, and I'll just look at it then. All right. And Azuma, of course, you're going to go on until you're 85, I know. <laughs> no, you know, um, uh, he, he don't have to stop the fight. You know, if I beat, if, if I beat him, he don't have to stop the fight, because I'm the best in the, in the division. Understand? And if I move up, He's going to take over, and nobody yeah. can beat him. That, that and point. you think you will move up? Yeah, I'm. I'm looking for a, 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 a how to come Whitaker. Whitaker again? Because because when I fought Whitaker, the same pro the same problem that I have when I fought uh, the champ the, the first fight, okay. right? And this time I'm going to prove. I just want to. I just want to. Uh, uh, I just want right. Suleiman to give me the chance to prove that I'm the you best. You will go up and fight Pernell. That leaves you wide open to be to contest for the champion in your division. You satisfied where you're at? Oh, I'm definitely happy. I, you know, I can make feel the way, but I'm happy. I, I was beaten by a great champion tonight. Thank you very much, Azuma. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, for a very valiant performance. Thank you, yeah. When we talk about Azuma Nelson, you got to think also a little bit higher up of Julio Cesar Chavez. You think you can put on enough weight? That man is as great a champion as you are. Hey, uh, uh, two girls champion me, and it's going to be something else. Oh, no, the, uh, uh, until we, until we, we, until we fight before we see the. He's a great champion. He's a rare. I tell you, I respect that guy so much. So that he's a great champion. And if I'm going to fight Chavez, I'm going to turn my, my head off. All right. One last question because it's been in everybody's head. You just didn't go to the ropes and get pinned. How did you get away from him when you didn't have that problem last time? You know my problem last time, like I told you. I, I know, but this time you didn't go to the ropes. I mean, you just played no, with I'm them. Just, I, I'm playing with them. It's a, like a, it's a All right, we, we have got to go now back to Steve Albert at ringside because I think we've exhausted the subject. Good luck and congratulations. Thank you you are a great thank champion. You. And I want to, I, I, I like to uh, thank the, uh, the, the doctor who made me operation and my friends in uh, 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 Spain, everything. I uh, say hello. I say hi to my babies. You fought all over the, the world. We'll be thank here all night much. saying goodbye. Good night. Okay. Back to uh, Steve Albert at ringside. All right. Thanks very much, Ferdy. We're going to take a look at the end of the fight once again. Here in the eighth round, it happened at 2.20. They ruled it a TKO in favor of the champion Azuma Nelson. It was eventually stopped when Johnny Lewis threw in the towel. There it is, the big right hand by Azuma Nelson. And down went Jeff Fennick. It was Fennick's first defeat ever. As Azuma Nelson retained his WBC Super Featherweight Championship. You saw, you noticed Arthur McKenney stepping in. He's ready to continue the fight. All right, they're going to get together again for a few more seconds. Then in came the towel from the corner of the challenger, Jeff Fennick. As Johnny Lewis said, that was enough. As Fennick, as you can see, was just getting pounded by Azuma Nelson. And the astounding thing here is that the judges... Rudy Ortega and Tommy Kazmarek had this even at 66. Nelson and Fennick, as far as Harry Gibbs saw it, 68-65 in favor of Azuma Nelson. That is really hard to fathom. How, how can you get knocked down twice in the first round? That's 10-8 rounds and then have it even. All right, so Azuma Nelson proves that Ferdy, he truly is the road warrior. Now 12-0-1 in title defenses covering the super featherweight and featherweight divisions. He held the WBC featherweight crown from 85 to 88 going 6-0 in the process. And he's held the WBC super featherweight title from 88 to the present going 6-0-1 in title defenses.